Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 16th episode of Tissues of the Day. I am your host, David. My co-host is the lovely... Robert McKay. <laughs> and uh, we are talking today about online connections with our special guest, Mao Mercado. Welcome, Mao. Thank you, Scary Carrot. Hey, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I hope I hope people appreciate that um, and just assume you're very witty and not just reading my nickname. <laughs> Today's episode is about online connections. This initially, excuse me, this initially started because Robert and I were looking at really old web design, like web 2.0, like that very chunky, high contrast, very bright colors. Um, flashing pop-ups, the whole nine yards, just like mm -hmm. just the weirdest looking websites mm -hmm. uh, I've yet to see. <laughs> and uh, we realized like it's a really interesting topic because uh, as the internet has evolved, our usage of it in relationships has evolved. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to start by throwing it to Robert because he's always got some interesting jumping off points. <laughs> Robert, what are some rules of engagement for online etiquette online communication uh starting with dating apps okay starting with dating apps because <laughs> yeah. i have i have returned to that world and i should say i didn't even have much exposure in that world because when i met my partner of 10 years it was just websites like apps on phones weren't a thing that aside the etiquette that i've seen almost starts off with a hey yeah okay, literally so, wait, so, so <laughs> wait, wait 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 so hey yeah, is now i was taking good. notes okay not hey is not hey. good if you want it's, a connection. <laughs> it's okay. just, you know, you know what it is. Yeah, that's the thing is like, I, and I'm guilty of it. There's plenty of people who I'm like, hey, sup. How about sup? Whatever. Sup. Yeah, no, there's plenty of sups. <laughs> um, and it's, we're not talking stand up paddle boarding. That would be more interesting. That would be more interesting. But instead. <laughs> wow, that was a deep cut. Yeah. I didn't know sup meant stand up paddle boarding. Yeah, it does. It does. Um, yeah, I find this is one of the difficulties with online dating apps, which is true of the stuff that will come into the rest of what we talk about, is that the immediacy, instantaneous nature and casualness of mobile phones and technologies translate into an equally as lackadaisical interactions with people. So I okay. make a particular effort to, um, you know, if I see something interesting in their photo or something in their profile to be like catchy little open phrase. And you know what? It's like the days of non-internet where it's mm -hmm. the person who came to you and did something honest, made an observation, made a bad opening joke that kind of catches your attention first. And I feel a lot of that was lost in dating apps. And it still works because when I do something like that, it's not a hey or a sup, the, I get more reactions or I get absolutely nothing. Because I think they're like, oh, this person is actually looking for more than just like a hookup. They're looking for a conversation and I don't get shit all. So I find I get somebody who's really like, oh, cool. Or like, go the fuck away. <laughs> that's one of the yeah, two. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, how about you, Mao, with... with dating apps you uh, feel free not to share this is a safe space we can cut anything out but like is the person you're seeing now uh met through a dating app yes and no so okay i yeah. start to start the the the, the answer i think it, it deserves a, a little bit more of a just black and white uh i met the current person through the app because the applications provide something to the, the, the disconnect that we have in the in our social uh, uh, civilization overall right now, right? So I am a technical person. The internet made a huge amount of, of things, but at the same time, psychologically speaking, has pretty much ruined every one of us. Uh, it gave us immediate access to things, and now we expect immediate everything. And that is, that is a really bad thing, especially in relationships. When we know the relationships that work the best are the ones that you actually try hard to make them work. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to get into a relationship. But when you have something like an app that lets you swipe back and forth, um, you know, you can go the same thing with people. It's, it's, it's not easy to see it because you are taking the time to know them. But how much time are you actually taking to know that this is the person for you? How much effort are you making? Because it's easy to just go in First date, eh, I don't, I don't, I didn't like how she ate her salad or, or, or I don't know how he, 
I don't know, picked up the fork. You can learn a lot by how people eat <laughs> <Right>? salad. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You, you chew like a rabbit. Oh my <laughs> yeah. god. Why does he chew his fucking water? So, <laughs> so you know. <laughs> like That is a problem for some people. Like chewing ice cubes is a real thing. <laughs> I like to chew ice cubes, but some people find it like nails on a chalkboard. I, I think it's, yeah, but but that's the point. Like it's, it's fine because what, <laughs> what if that, what if 95% of you is amazing but then the five percent that choose the ice cubes is just annoying, uh, annoying. Sorry. And so, mm -hmm. when you have a a, a a a net, a safety net, which is the app that just lets you swipe right and left, you're never gonna commit. You don't have to mm -hmm. because you just can't go to the next person, to the next person, to the next person until you realize that at some point the app is just going to go around the same number of people. So what are you gonna do? Are you gonna move cities? Are you so yeah. that immediacy is, is it's hard. So now onto the actual question of how I met the person that I'm currently dating. So funny enough, we met. Wait, wait, wait. Can I can I answer this for Mao? So he, yeah. we he has an added advantage that neither of us have. He's a developer, so he made okay. the app himself and has been really successful <laughs> with girls for short devs. It's uh, <laughs> it's like succeeded greatly for him. <laughs> Okay, I, I, it's called shorties. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shorties. So for, for, okay, so for Robert, okay, I, I'm a, I'm a Latin American dude. Um, my, my average height in, as far as I know, in, in Latin America is like 168 meters. Um, I'm 165. Always, uh, mm -hmm. always below average. Um, but that's okay. I made my <laughs> life on it. Um, anyway, so <laughs> you forgot the decimal the place question, in there. <laughs> you forgot the decimal place in there. If you're let, let him answer the question, Robert. <laughs> Damn it, Robert. Come on. Always Come the same on, just... thing. <sighs> <sighs> All right. So <laughs> um, I met her through Bumble. And the reason why I like Bumble personally mm -hmm. is because it, it allows the person, uh, especially the, 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 uh, on, on, it allows the, 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 the partner or the person that you're interested in to, uh, or, or the, the in, in this case the um, it allows the 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 woman uh, or woman or or the gender is it is this right it, it allows the, the the female I I don't know what, how to say this okay it allows yes. uh, uh, female identifying yes it, thank you it allows female identifying people to take that first step and I think that is very important ah. uh, in, in this day and age because exactly what you said right like. Some dudes are just going to send a dick pic because that's how they go at it, right? Uh, some dudes are just going to say, hey, and and girls, sometimes they just swipe right and left. Same things that we do. We just swipe right and left because we're busy in the toilet and we don't have anything to read. So, um, you know, and so this actually presents at least some level of uh, of interest. Um, because mm -hmm. in, in, in Tinder, say, you can say whatever you want to whoever you want. You don't have to entertain anything. But the rule in Bumble is that you have 24 hours to be engaged if you both match. And you have to be engaged, engaged by the female identifying part of, 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 of the match. Um, and we talked. That was two years ago. Right? We uh. talked, but we didn't click. Um, I guess mm. it wasn't the moment that we had to like, I, I guess we weren't in different, uh, uh, psychology stance at that point, but, uh, we just didn't click. We hang out for a little bit. Absolutely nothing happened. We went once to, uh, a, a bar, uh, to dance, uh, cause, um, yeah, there's a salsa club. Ooh. Ooh. And so we were dancing all night long. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, but she went with a friend because obviously she was she didn't feel uh, that she wanted to go along with me uh, because we haven't met really physically. So that was the point. But I ended up talking more with her friend um, than with her, um, even even though it just didn't connect with anyone. So at that point, we just stopped talking. Like seven months ago, uh, we started talking again on on, on Instagram. Um, she she was just literally asking because she likes whiskey, and so she was asking about a, a bar that I went to, Fets. Um, and so we just took the conversation from there. I was always physically interested in her. Um, she was also physically interested in me, which is why we uh, met through Bumble. But then we started talking more and more, and uh, I think. 
until February, I can say that we actually started uh, connecting. And I think it's just been one month since we started dating um, continuously. Um, so yeah, but but if, if you can see the progress, what I'm aiming towards here is that it wasn't just meeting, going to eat, and immediately going through the expectations of, well, we match, might as well. We just, I, yeah. I always take it easy. Um, I try to connect with the person that I see on, in front of me and not that a person that I connect through online or that has the Instagram feed. Um, and I met her and, I, and, and I'm like, I'm, I'm liking what I'm seeing and, I, and I'd like to see more of that. I like to meet, like know more of that. So it's it's always an ongoing effort. And, I, and this is one of the reasons why I, don't like dating apps. So the first thing that I did when I started seeing here actually was um, I just deleted all my dating apps because there's no point. There's no safety net. Either I go, I, I try to make this work or, or I, or you're not trying. Or not yeah. trying. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Very cool. Um, yeah. There's, there's definitely a lot uh, to go off of there from what both of you said, because it's like online etiquette with dating apps. And I still want to talk about work emails and social media more in general, but dating apps is more in the ballpark of this, um, podcast, but like, uh, yeah, just that idea of putting in effort and like Robert was saying, saying more than a, Hey, or a sup is, is so huge because like you just I don't know that I think maybe there are some guys who just like genuinely in their heart of hearts they just feel that hey and that's <laughs> up and they're like this is this is me really showing up right now <laughs> this is the I'm true being self. so authentic yeah. <laughs> um that sup capitalized with an s <laughs> you know and like maybe that could work better in person and they just don't realize like the online aspect just does not carry the same weight um but what is more likely the case is it's a way of hiding it's a way of like avoiding being authentic avoiding making an effort because if you make an effort then it hurts when you're rejected like it's really that simple um and i think there's uh, probably a majority of the people on dating apps are just looking for that like easy thing that like yeah you know quick fix like Matt was saying well and i think also on the point of like ease is that it and i try to do this myself and again i'm not perfect so there are times where i don't and and they're usually where i'm more in a hookup mindset but for the most part when i'm trying to entertain a person i think both the recipient and the sender has to make a conscient conscious effort to only focus their energies on like one or two, maybe three people or something. Because I think you one of the biggest issues is that when people have a catalog of options in front of them, the reason they might be sending off these sups and hays is because they're basically like, it's like, uh, it's like fishing. Yeah, it's like just throw <laughs> throw them all out there and see what, you know, yeah. what snaps, what fish is going to grab this. But we're we're all we're not stupid when as a recipient of that we know it's not like it doesn't show much particular interest and then you're going to put back an equal amount of or lack of interest and energy back to the person so unless you really try to push it beyond just that kind of initial like very lackadaisical like sup i think both parties just kind of like oh i'm not expecting much of this and i might or might not put an effort because i'm doing this amount of effort with 12 other people also do you know, like it's just it's just like systemic of the problem in which the apps are, in which the way the apps are designed. So w one thing that actually comes to mind with what you just said is the hate of the sub and and people hiding and it, it just it, and and to give a little bit of a bridge to go through social media and emails and work related things. Um, one of the reasons why we jump right away to the hey or the sub as a as a as a E, as an ex hey sender, um, it is it is a means of hiding, but it's also a means of going next to the next step right away. It's also a means to like, look, this conversation doesn't make sense here. I'm better in person. Let's just meet. But it also has to do a lot with what uh, that David had to say in terms of it is fear. It's easier to not try if you just you know if you're gonna get rejected. But you see those two, you see that thing also at work. So when you send an email and, and, and you set up a meeting through Zoom that you have to have a conversation because you don't know exactly what to do about something, 
most of those meetings could have been an email. But the reality is that you wanna you wanna measure how people are taking it. And the 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 the, the cues that you take from people when you're able to see them and interact with them in person are lost on an email. Oh yeah. Right. And so you you rather do a meeting because somehow you have to see people's reaction to your idea. Because if you receive a, a, an email coming back saying that's not good, you should do this. If you're a very anxious person like myself, um, and you, you're probably going to read it as, oh, this person is pissed off and thinks I'm an idiot. Um, and so you rather jump into like, let me see how you react and let me see how you take that message and let's collaborate together. But you could do this asynchronously, right? So it might it, it might also be that. Like in my, in my opinion, it could be that. It could be the, hey, it's just a way of like, let's just skip this step. This is dumb. Let's just go and see each other and talk to each other in person. Mm -hmm. So Mao, hold on. So you're saying that in the context of the online world, what mm -hmm. worked really well for you is somebody who just sent you something to do with whiskey and then you were hooked. Well, I mean, yeah, but it also exposes me to a lot of dangers. Um... <laughs> for those who are listening or watching, I just sent Wow a whiskey emoji on his cell phone. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, mm. it's, it's a trap, <laughs> you know, you yeah. can easily fall into traps, but, um, I don't know, man, it's every online interaction. Like I, I'll give you WhatsApp, for example, and, 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 and the, the, we, so I'm going to ask this question and feel free to not answer. I was born in 1983. Are you, uh, around that time? Uh, Robert, I think you were around that time as well. Same year. Uh, David, how about yourself? Uh, 93. 93. Okay. Yeah. So our generation, uh, was a generation that was born without the internet. Right. And so we were able to see the contrast between going, having to go outside at the given time. <laughs> Because or if, if our friends tell me more, <laughs> it sounds so nice, right? It's like look, if, if you don't if you don't talk if, if I call your phone uh, uh, if I call you home and you're not home, that's it, like done. That there's nothing to do. We had the patience to wait. We had the ability to just sit down and say, well, whatever they left, I'm just gonna play by myself. In, in wow, so ways. <laughs> we've been doing a lot of that during the pandemic. Let yeah. me tell you, I yeah. know. Hey, that, that's how I keep myself sane. Okay. I, yeah. <laughs> all right. So, <laughs> so the amount if, of if, lotion sales have skyrocketed during 2020. Yeah. Lotion, sanitizer, uh, for me, sound dampening foam. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. Because your neighbors are being disturbed by your late night activities. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I just spilled really This bad. is a legit story. This is a legit story. <laughs> yeah, it's on uh, Amr's episode of the podcast. I just got to grab a towel. Uh-oh, I got to grab a towel. Oh, no. <laughs> David just spat up all over himself with water, with water for those who are listening. Yeah, we were just talking about it. We weren't even. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um... <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> but I think you you make a really good point in this, Mao, is that, you know, be it the work emails, the social media, the dating apps and that, all that context of the in-person is lost. And if people yes. didn't have enough exposure to utilizing that space to kind of build or garner those relationships, right. it, but, it's, it, it's, I feel like you're at a disadvantage. <laughs> yeah, but also what, we, what I'm trying to say is the, the, the need for immediacy, the incapacity for waiting, the, the lack of yeah. patience. Um, I mean, it's everywhere right now. Everyone is just done with waiting. Everyone is done with... Dude, my mom used to ping me through WhatsApp and then send me a message to see if I saw my WhatsApp. And then five minutes later, she'll call me to see if I saw the message to see if she saw my, did my, oh my WhatsApp, gosh. right? So, <laughs> so I mean... I don't know, 15 years ago, she could only beep me because I had a beeper. <laughs> oh, you had a beeper? I had a beeper. Yeah, I had a beeper oh, at that wow. point. But the reason why we had a beeper is because she Mal was a doctor see... in a previous life. <laughs> <laughs> previous life. So uh, let me tell you about... <laughs> <laughs> he likes so... whiskey and he he's a doctor, ladies, just in case anyone else is looking. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let me do my, uh, let me do my uh, success doctor post. 
<laughs> I love it. Nice. Use that for Ooh, his avatar, good. David. Use that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, wow. I, I I think there's a lot of there's a lot of hiding. There's a there's a um there's a lot of hiding between personas and Instagram and everything else. There's a lot of suffering also because um. I mean, obviously, no one shows the the bad side of things. Like, no one shows an Instagram selfie of doing a line in the bank, right? Everyone's just like, "I'm I'm always on vacation and stuff like that," right? So, there's there's that pressure. Um, there's um, the 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 big thing is immediacy that translates to everything else. It yeah. translates to dating. It translates to work. It translates to your 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 even your relationship with money. It it it's it's very dangerous and it's it's it it has to be treated lightly um and yeah it ha- it just has to be treated lightly yeah 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 this um ties into the next like subject question of just how does the increase in connectivity today compare to the past which is what we've just been talking about um are there any ways that it might be better now this increase in connectivity um, i have a great example of this literally from my flight that i took out here was um so i you know at, while departing at the airport my lovely friend david and my friend Amr were there uh to see me off and i had a moment of after saying goodbye and going through security and waiting um in the like I only had probably like 20, 30 minutes after I got through security to get onto my plane. And there was just kind of this lovely aspect of like, from that moment, Amr was able to take a picture of me, or of the group of us, send it to me. And I could, and I forgot to take one. I forgot to t- take those like going away photos and send it to me so I could receive that. I could send a picture of myself on the plane to say, hey, I got on and I'm okay. And I got through security. And also my friend Jamie, who the day prior had come out to see me, I had bought me a bottle of wine. I owed him money. And literally, like, bef- like <laughs> and while I was going up in the air and I could see my bars going down, I sent him the money <laughs> for the bottle of wine. So that connectivity suddenly made all that interaction and that experience so much quicker and easier and simplistic. You could never fucking have done that before. Apps, um, especially, like, mobile apps. Um, um, and even harder back in the just laptop days. But, yeah, so that is a good example. There are definitely bad ones as well. What about for other people? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, to summarize probably a lot of what Mao was saying is just like that relationship with immediacy makes it seem like we have somehow like earned intimacy from more people than we really did. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think the fun thing that I like to think about is, um, is that like the internet creates like this over abundance of novelty like new information new faces new bodies like new hobbies whatever (laughs) while intimacy is an act of like depth it is kind of the opposite of novelty you are making a choice to expose yourself as much as you can to this person and vice versa um and you get into these rhythms of life that are frankly like more normal like more boring less exciting than um all that novelty so i think with all of this online stuff we just have to make that choice or have that awareness of am i in this for that novelty or am i in this because i want like a deep meaningful experience of life (laughs) i think on the on the good side of things um Again, if it wasn't for the dating apps that we're talking about, which I criticize a lot, there's a lot of people that you wouldn't connect to. There's a lot of people that you wouldn't even have the chance in your life to talk to. Um, The amount of information out there is amazing, but we we are not prepared to consume it. We need to be smarter at consuming it. We need to double check things. We need to doubt everything that comes from us. Which also put us on a on a on a hazard point, but I'm, I'll talk to I'll talk about the pros of it. If you know how to consume it, it's great because you have information coming from anywhere instantly, and and you know what could affect you immediately or what could affect you in the long term, and you can make decisions around it. Um, the fact that um, I'm not a person that loves uh, uh, chit chat. Um, uh, specifically with people that I do not communicate often. Um, mm-hmm. So if you need something from me, 
and and you know you have my trust, just send me a message. It's like, hey, Mal, can you do me a favor? Can we do this, right? And so that saves you, I don't know, the hassle of me having to go get my phone at any given point. You know, like it's it's it saves you some time and I can transfer you the money right away. And now email, it's another, it's another thing, right? Like you could, you could, I think email is one of the most underappreciated methods of asynchronously, uh, of asynchronous conversation. Um, because you can have the time to express your thoughts to a specific circle of people or person and send them everything you want in a private way. If you don't want to be private, you can make a blog post. The problem with with chats like WhatsApp, even though they're asynchronous, is that they're immediate. So you don't have the time to think about what you're sending. You're just reacting and sending whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And so even if even though you could do it, you don't do it because it, it WhatsApp just feels like you need to move quick. You need to just yeah. do this, right? While while you're typing an email, I, I mean, I, I, immediately you assume it's more professional, right? Yeah. I don't know. At least for me, that's the case, even though I'm writing an email. Well, hell, it's letters. Like, I remember being taught in school how to formulate a letter and to, com right? to like <laughs> formulate your thoughts and your structure and all that. And it still translates today into email now, whereas like instantaneous message... Um, you do have the choice to formulate your thoughts. And if anyone's communicated yes. with me on instant messaging, I, for the most part, am not the like, you know, one, one line send, one line send. I like form paragraphs and I well, form thoughts because it's just, I hate actually because I have a bit of empathy for it where I'm like, I know what it's like on the other end where you hear they're like, boop, 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 and I'm just like, I don't want to <laughs> do that to the other person. So I just, for the most part, do one liners, yeah. like one paragraph. Yeah. I rather have that long text message, but again, um, I don't like to type too much on my phone, and so I usually that's that's uh, I usually just answer from my computer if it's a message, if it's WhatsApp or Signal, whatever. I rather be close to my computer if I if I need to send a long text, um, um, or I'll just send you a a voice message with not everyone uh, likes to, especially if they're longer than one minute. Um, but the funny thing is. People have long conversations um, and, and it's made it easy to continue to have a conversation that is not on, on the phone. So I'll give you an example. Uh, usual example of teenage love just on the phone and we're talking about the 90s here. This is just silent for 10 minutes. <laughs> freaking fights with the brothers, sisters, whatever you want because someone else needs the freaking phone. And you just they're siding to each other. It's like, oh yeah, right. <laughs> Thank you, what's up? Because yeah. <laughs> you know it's you don't you don't have to sit there. It's like, are are you there? Oh yeah, I just fell asleep. Oh okay, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. Now you actually have like, oh, it vibrated. Okay, now it's my time to answer. So that kind of is interesting. <laughs> but mm -hmm. but yeah, the phone one. It's it's it. It, 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 it makes things easier. It makes things faster. But with that comes a lot of, you know, the balancing out, don't trust everything that you see, be patient. And that is mm -hmm. a key component of what I think it's been fucking killing everyone. It's just be patient. I, I, a big thing mm -hmm. I think also that was brought up in what Mao was saying is I think the right tool for the job. I think some people are using things like text to have entire long ass conversation when it's not necessary. Like text is supposed to be immediate, quick and actionable. Whereas like if you want something that requires a conversation, I'm much more the one like you, you both know this, like I'm a caller. I will call you because I want to have a conversation. And sometimes I do it because I'm literally like, I'm right by your house. I'm not going to send you a text and you discover it an hour later. So I think some people have just mixed their mediums and their purpose. Where they're yeah. like using text to have entire long conversations. I'm like, I don't want to have this over text. Just like, hell, I mean, send me a voice memo if you have to, mm -hmm. you know? So I think people use the sometimes the wrong tool for the wrong purpose. And I really like the point that Mal brought up around how like it has provided an advantage for us um, access 
uh, to things that we didn't have access to before. So for example, like David and I being in the queer community, um, to be able to quickly identify queer people in your area easily and in, 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 like that wasn't a thing before. That's why hookup culture, why cruising and why gay bars existed because you needed to go to space where you were sure because everything else was like this code and this eye contact and this talk that you never really knew. So a perfect example would be like, imagine you're, let's say, working for a company and you just hired a really attractive guy and you're going to your coworkers and you're like, hey, Wait, uh, if I hired somebody, no, if I hired like, somebody, I cannot date them. The power this, imbalance this is, is totally is not hypothetical, ethical. right? It's like, okay, you're okay. like, maybe you're just, you know, you had a few months of responsibility of hiring people and you hired this one cute guy and you weren't quite sure. And you're asking your coworker, hey, it's like, I just hired this really cute, short Latino guy. And I don't know if he's gay or straight. And I really need to know. And then he turns out to be straight and you're fucking pissed. And all you can do is sit in front of him all day and be like, this attractive asshole is going off. <laughs> Let's move on to another question. So, (laughs) (laughs) I need to talk to my HR (laughs) representative. (laughs) Um, Uh, David Clooney. I'm going to plug something that you're saying right there, and it's the the decentralization of everything. And, Mm -hmm. and, And that's a key component for the scaling of every system, right? So we are living in a world that is full of inefficiencies. Everything is inefficient. Like the way that we've been living until today, uh, the reason why we're seeing uh, a technical or technological companies going up and, 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 and being more valued is because they are starting to get uh, the inefficiencies of the system out. So the reason why most manufacturers are going out of work, most uh, like coal plants and and I don't know, like manual uh, car assembly lines, like all of those things, the reason why they're losing is because they're just simply inefficient, right? You can automate all of it. You can automate all the things, but I'm not talking about automation. I'm talking about decentralization. So in the, in the, in the sense of decentralization, it's, you said it yourself, a good example is gay, a gay bar. A gay bar was a hub that people had to go to meet the rest of the, of, of, of the world. But now, you have that capacity in your phone. You have that capacity in your computer, right? I mean, th- let's just stick to the phone because the phone, seriously, we went from bricks that could break pe- like people's head and will never, never uh, damage. It, there wasn't any damage to the phone. There was a damage to the pe- person's head. Uh, but now, I don't know if these things can break some- someone's head, but it can definitely give you access to the entire world. So... Now you've taken that inefficiency of the bars and and just put it here and now you're able to access everywhere. All kind of information, all kind of things. So I'm not saying that bars are going to die, but its purpose has now been relegated to it makes me feel good to see people, but I'm not necessarily going to talk to them because that's why I have this. Which brings me back to the point of... Make an effort. Why not meet someone at a bar? Because you have an app that you could just like, oh, is this person in this? Let's see. Let's see. Oh, he's not in, in Bumble or he's not in Tinder or he's not in whatever uh, applications out there. Uh, so I'm just not even going to try. Right? Oh, insane. my God. Yeah. Just the different. That is absolutely a thing with like some gay communities where it's like they'll see someone and they'd be like, oh, I wonder if they're single. And then they check all the apps yep. to see if they're on yep. any of the apps. And yep. it's just like, or you could talk to them. They're 20 feet away. <laughs> yep. And it doesn't <laughs> really help effort. because you can check the app and they could be on there. And like their partner doesn't know because they don't list it or they're hidden or whatever. You're like, so it's not <laughs> yeah, helping. I mean, but 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 <laughs> realize that at the end of the day, it going and walking 20 feet, it's harder than, oh, I found it. I'm just going to say, hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's huge. Um, wow. Okay, so we're almost done with our with our deep talk. Uh, it, uh, boys, what aspect of digital life is most rewarding? And what aspect is most toxic, in your opinion? Robert? I'm not... I, so <laughs> I don't think I could pick the most and the worst yeah. kind of thing. But examples are, I think one of the probably most rewarding pieces of uh, digital life has been consolidation. 
So that's where I think we have the capacity to, for example, go out to places like Facebook or something like that and say, I need advice on X or I need a recommendation on Y. And you can get back all these ideas and thoughts similar to like uh, shared documents. You can put all the information you need and get everyone else to come in and share into that same document and collaborate on it. I think consolidation and centralizing, which is kind of almost opposite to what Mao was talking about, but like sort of the idea of bringing everything together and centralizing that information is really, really useful. I think one of the most toxic aspects would be dating apps. I think dating apps have really, really screwed up the relationship world and it's not entirely the fault of the design of the app so i think is it a factor i think it's also how we're using it as to what we discussed earlier where we're spreading ourselves too thin we're not dedicating and we're going for the novelty and not for the effort not for the the like i like translate that app into like instead of like a grid of people on an app but like a grid of people in a room and you're like i'm gonna go for you I'm not going to go for all of you, you know, like actually putting in the bloody effort. Um, yeah. um, I, same thing as Robert. I don't think I can pick the most. Um, but funny enough, decentralization, it's not opposite to what you're saying. Um, so the reason is because you have access to a central folder. It seems mm. central, but in reality, sure. right? In reality, that thing is spread all over the world. So yeah. when you're accessing a document, a Google document from England that someone put it in British Columbia, what has actually happened, uh, what is actually happening is that uh, your device is downloading a copy that is getting synchronized eventually, but it's decentralized, right? So it allows access, easy access to most of the things. Um, so I think education, uh, the, the access to education, it's going to be huge. Uh, for the, for the internet, which it's it's amazing, the communication skills that that that, that well, not the communication skills, but the skills overall that you can have because of the of of the of the easier ways of of that the internet has provided us, right? Uh, that the the capacity that we have from working from home, and like I have my own setup. I've been working from home for more than ten years, uh, on and off, right? It's always like the option to go to the office, but that capacity allows you to do more and be more productive with your time if you know how to balance it um on the bad side of things i don't think it has anything to do with the specificity of dating apps or, or instagram or social media i think is that the danger is actually the monetization of it or the model that it uses to attract people to it and the way that people use it so it has to Again, I'm going to repeat this again because this is the main the main factor that I'm seeing across everything is the immediacy, the the neediness that it provides because it, it it is addictive and and the lack of patience that it gives people. So people just want things right now and it doesn't matter what things are defined by them. Like what is a thing for them? Is it a relationship? Is it money? Is it anything, right? And so when people when people get most frustrated and anxious when they cannot meet their goals, but if their goals are ridiculously short timed and 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 just you know internet wise, I just want to work from it. I, I just want to be an Instagram model and and I mean you know you have just two followers, your mom and your dog. I mean, you know, <laughs> it's gonna take time. Um, so I think it's that. I think it's more the, the technology is not good or bad inherently. It's how you use it, how you how you give the. How you use it and how you turn to it, right? But it's not a technology itself is not bad or it's not good or bad. Mm. Cool. Um, yeah, for me, probably, you know, synthesizing a lot of what you guys are saying, the most toxic aspect of digital life definitely seems to be that like dehumanizing and like disinformation. And a lot of that does tie into money, like, yeah. <laughs> um, because you know, okay, so dehumanization, what do I mean by that? That's like the inability to like empathize with people because there's just this glass wall between you, number one, yeah. the you're performing a role, that other person is performing a role. So you're not really seeing like the real person or even real images of them. Um, yeah, and David then the sends so many fake dick pics. Like it's like he's known yeah. for it. <laughs> and then the other dehumanization is like... Um, we're having these like short conversations. We're assuming a whole 
history uh, of a person based on their hay or their sup or you know they're like this is so stupid I completely disagree with this and then you're like well this person is obviously uh, you know just a bad person like I could yeah. never be friends with them I could never agree with them so that dehumanization can be that in like a very toxic argumentative way and it can also be in a very toxic like over idealizing way when we talk about like you know, dating online or whatever. I think everybody has had that experience of like, get, like crushing on someone who they're like, oh, this person's like so beautiful. Oh, they're so funny and witty. And it's like, well, given any amount of effort or even just paying someone, anyone could make a very witty, beautiful, like well-presented <laughs> profile. Yeah. So all of that stuff to me is dehumanization and is just this like slow slipping away from, you know, what it's like to be like real Absolutely. and interactive. Um, and so the most rewarding aspect of digital life for me has just been like the access to art. I think there okay. are a lot of <laughs> I'm so glad great, you said art. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of great artists, great musicians, great video creators um, who are putting their work out there that I never would have seen in a million years if it weren't for the Internet. Um, and so. You know, I try to appreciate the art for what it is, give money when I can, um, because then that ties right back into the money question of like the relationship between art and money will always be pretty like uh, tense. And that hasn't changed with the Internet. Oh. Absolutely. Well, can I, I, can I, I throw you. in a little piece? What I heard into <laughs> yeah, yours, course. David, was just yeah. uh, decontextualization, I think, is a really mm -hmm. bad aspect where like so much of what we see. It, you're like getting a small chunk of the conversation. You're not reading the whole thread. You don't know the whole person. You don't know the whole story and everything in which that happened in, which you get so much more of in mm. person. So anyways, people, yeah. people are just reading the titles yeah, and assuming everything through it. And I, I love the point that you made about dehumanization um, because it's, it's so much deeper than, than we think in terms of, of, of just reading someone's tweet. It goes even way, way deeper than that. It's it's the way that we as a person, we like to just put everyone in a box because it makes us comfortable. It makes me feel good that I understand who you are. And and that makes me that makes you predictable for me. And so having a, it, it, for example, with Robert, right, I, I cannot say that I know Robert enough. I, there's there's. There's so many aspects of him that just makes him impossible to read. And I don't like to put people in boxes. And the reason why I don't like to put people in boxes is because when they do something unpredictable, then that would somehow annoy me. But it shouldn't because, again, I don't know Robert. And in the same way that, that I don't, maybe I don't know my best friend. I might have an idea on what he might do next, but... Putting people in boxes in, in, in the internet is so easy by just seeing a tweet in 250 characters or even a whole timeline of 14 years of tweets. You're never going to understand what that people has been go, gone through, right? So dehumanization, decontextualization, that's, that's, a, that's an amazing point. I haven't even thought about it that way. That, that's a great, great point. Yeah. It, it goes yeah. deep. Don't put well, me in a box, Mal. Just, just some no, cuffs. That's all. <laughs> it's true. If, if we all, if we all like, just, you know, really focus on being present, it uh, Sorry, improves what? a lot of. If we all, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it improves a lot of aspects of our lives. To Absolutely. be very general. Um, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna now play a game to close out the show. So. In line with dehumanization, decontextualization, <laughs> we are going to play two truths and a lie. Oh my god, and Mao is showing off his wireless headphones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Excellent for podcasting. <laughs> um, cool. So yeah, the way this game works is we will tell one uh, lie along with two truths, and it is up to the other people to figure out which one is which. So who wants to go first? I can go first. Okay. All right. Okay. So, uh, um, I declined a contract with Sony Music Entertainment a long time ago. Oof. I am actually I was a kitesurf instructor, and 
I always wanted to work at Intel, hence my electronics Bachelor of Science degree. So that's my three, three things. Go ahead. Sony. It, it, so it was Sony, and then it was uh, what was the middle Kite company? Kitesurfing instructor. Kite was it surfing. Was instructor was okay. it? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then it was wanting to work at Intel. Yes. Okay. I need to fix my camera, by the way. I have yeah, an no advantage because I know one of these is true. Okay. Yeah, you do. Cheater. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay, so if I had to ask, uh, so okay, so with kite surfing, mm. um, did you do that in the BC, like off of the Pacific uh, coast, or uh, in, a different coast? It would be if I would have done that because I don't like the cold water. I would have done it. Uh, so I used to live in Colombia before I moved to BC six years ago. So I would okay. have done it in the Caribbean for sure. Okay. Why did you turn down Sony? Because I don't like to do the things that I want. Like that, I I don't like to be forced to do things. Okay. And then, uh, um, what, uh, what was the inspiration for working for wanting to work at Intel? What was like that formative experience with Intel? I used, I started working with computers when I was like nine or 10 years old or not working, but really got passionate into it. And I got into the hardware of it for a while. So when I was 13 years old, I was overclocking CPUs and I was trying to get, I was reading so much. I think when I was 15, the internet went to my hometown and I started reading about like NVIDIA and, and overclocking CPUs and all those stuff kind of things. So I said to myself, it will be so cool to work at, at Intel or something like that. He's a nice. really big nerd, so that could be true. <laughs> and he okay. doesn't like being told to do things. He's very stubborn, so the first okay. one could be true. So, Don't tell me I'm so, stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not stubborn. Yeah. I will prove it. <laughs> um, my guess is that the lie is um, that you didn't do like an electrical science engineering degree it's like some different degree how about you robert so, i so wait, am me, going let to me, let me rephrase that so i I'll, okay. I always wanted to work at intel so the 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 lie or the truth would be i always wanted to work at intel hence the electronic spectrum oh okay yeah, yeah. oh i see yeah, I see. yeah so it's the and that's the piece i think you got the degree for a different reason not because of intel so i think that's the lie okay all right can you reveal now are we close yes so you both like pretty much you both got it. I, I <laughs> didn't care for Intel at all. I do have an electronics <laughs> bachelor of science degree. Um, mm -hmm. And the reason that I got that degree was, was because even though I, I was interested in computers and, and services and all that, I wasn't never that interested in electronics. I was more interested in the computer science of things. But when I was a kid back in Colombia, the computer scientists were the engineers that my dad would set his computer when I broke it. <laughs> so I, I mean i learned how to repair it when i was 13 so i'm like i'm not gonna study to like be the guy that like fixes someone's computer when his fucking kid breaks it so i thought that was the computer science kind of way i was so freaking wrong uh, i do not regret my electronics degree uh bachelor's degree but or electrical bachelor's degree but but definitely i would have enjoyed more if i went to computer science right away Oh. Mm. And after that, he became a kite surfing instructor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Takes I mean, to bridge the gap. <laughs> I, I can. Okay. So the two truths, right? So when I was eight years old, um, I, I used to sing at school. I used to sing at all this uh, events at the school, at the high school. So it was a Catholic high school. We had Mother's Day, big event. And I started singing when I was in, in, in pre- in preschool at that point um it, latin american schools if, if you're not familiar with them they all it's the same school for preschool uh high school and and secondary and all of that stuff that you guys have on, in, in in the north american side of things um so when i was in preschool i i started the, the i joined the course because a teacher saw me heard me singing and so i was like okay i'll, I'll go in um, and then when I was nine years old, uh, Sony Entertainment Music actually went to my place, uh, talked to my dad and my dad just told him, he's like, look, if he wants to do it, he'll do it. If he doesn't want to, he won't do it. I'm not going to say anything to him. So 
It's like, Mao, so these people are here because uh, they want to talk to you because they want to, you know, uh, they hear you singing. They want to record you singing and blah, blah, blah. And my the, the way that my dad tells the story is I, I just I, I just went in, saw everyone, said no and ran away. <laughs> so. <laughs> but he's a very good singer. I've heard him sing. So there you go. Thank Ooh. you. Um, I haven't cool. sang for a while, but yeah. Um, <laughs> and the other one, when I was uh, working for, I was working for a company in New York, working remotely, and I always loved the uh, ocean, and I was bored of just sitting down and having a beer, because if I mean Robert knows me, he knows that I cannot stand still yeah. for long periods of time, and so the ocean was right there, and I was like there sitting doing nothing. And the ocean was right there. And then, um, yeah, I just had, I, I, I saw people doing their thing. I said, okay, I got to do this. And so I became an, an, actually an IKEO, IKEO certified um, uh, instructor of kite surfing, which expired, by the way, like two years ago or three years ago. But that is an international recognition of kite surfing instructor. So I was able to teach other people how to kite surf. That expires, so... So it's just yeah. you. So let, let, let's just yourself. paint the picture here. He was a athletic kite surfing instructor nerd Latino. Yes. You can mm-hmm. understand why this has been a problem for me. <laughs> <laughs> let's go to the next I one. I get it. <laughs> All right, next person. Yeah. Um, do you want to go, Robert, or do I? Uh, how about this? I'm going to hold up a flavor of gummy to the camera, David. And if you can guess correctly what flavor it is, you go right first. If you get it wrong, I okay. go next. What flavor is okay. it going to be? Oh, I don't get to see it? Well, you have to guess before I show it. And then if you're right, you go first. Oh. But how do I know that you've made a choice? What if you just pick the opposite it's one that I said? It's in my hand right now. It's in my hand Can right now. Can you hold it? Okay. Okay. Um, what is it? Uh, mango gummy. Uh, correct. Is it? Yeah. Wait, is it? I can't see it. It's mango. It's I see it. It's mango. It. Oh, well, I'm showing it to the, it to the camera to the that's oh, going to go, beautiful. you know. <laughs> You're right. Wow. Go. So wait, so so I go if yeah. I'm correct. Okay. And I um, eat. I prefer summer to winter. I have six siblings. I once tried to hook up with a guy four hours away, but he caught feelings and told me not to show up. Those are my three. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! I can't remember how many siblings he has. <laughs> Wait, what, what? What sports do you like to do? What sports? Yeah, do you uh, do sports? I'm, by the way, yeah, I'm big on paddle sports. Paddle sports. Uh, no, uh, I'm big on, oh. um, on <laughs> Wait, oh. uh, ping pong, ping pong, tennis, pickleball. Uh, badminton, BDSM, you know, like the usual, yeah. yeah. Okay, BDSM, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say badminton. No, no, no. I'm going to go ahead and say that you love <laughs> summer more than winter, and that's your lie. Okay. Wait, was it you love winter or summer more? I prefer summer to winter. Is the oh, okay. Thing. So that's not a lie. Okay. I understood. That's that. true. Okay. That's true. Yeah, that is true. Okay. By process of elimination. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go. Hold on. Why did the guy grab feels? How long had you been talking? We'd been talking for maybe two months at the time. And, he, and it was pretty consistent. It was like a lot of Snapchats, a lot of nudes. Yeah, it was the whole thing. And he didn't want to hook up after that. Four hours? And he before? didn't want to. Yeah, he was four hours away. He was in Yakima. Lie. <laughs> no gay man after all that connection and communication go, and nudes would not want to hook up. I'm actually going to go with the four hour. No, no, with the sibling things. I have a, I, I don't okay. know why I could, I could somehow see this person just saying it's like, nah, if, if we play paddles <laughs> at one point, I'm just gonna, just, it's gonna be too hard for me to let you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. The okay, only I'm reason I think sibling. the sibling thing could be a lie is because I yeah. think he technically has five, not six. I okay. Think. Are these final answers? Yes. Yeah. I'm going with the hookup though. Siblings. Okay. 
So the lie is siblings. I have five siblings, I knew not it. six. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't uh, tell the story yeah. though. It just goes. It yeah. just goes to show the like low expectations <laughs> I have the gay community. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was a this was a younger guy, um, and yeah, he said pretty early on he was like, I just you know I catch feelings pretty quickly, and um, and he just sort of confessed them to me, and I was like, okay, well. You know, you don't really know me going back to our conversation about like making an effort, doing stuff in person, whatever. Um, I was like, do you want to like demystify the experience versus like romanticize me from a few hours away? But I should just tell you, like, this is just about sex for me. I'm sorry if I've given you another impression. And he was like, ew, I feel grossed out. This is nasty. <laughs> like, leave oh me God. alone. Why don't you want a relationship? I was like, okay. All right. <laughs> wow. Never mind. Classic Yakima Flake. Everybody knows yeah. about him. <laughs> Everybody knows about Yakima Flake. <laughs> Yakima um, sounds like a dessert bar. You want a Yakima yeah. Flake? <laughs> Uh, I wanted to yak, but he didn't give me the chance. (laughs) (laughs) Claps for that one, David. Yeah, I wanted BDSM, badminton, dick, sex, and money. (laughs) 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 Um, Robert, what are your two truths in your life? Okay, here are mine. They are all on a theme in terms of how I'm delivering them. One of them is going to be easy. I accidentally set a jerry can of gasoline on fire. I accidentally broke a window with a high heel. And I accidentally hired a Latino guy who I have a crush on. (laughs) Okay, so, all right, I know at least one is true. Um, Broke a window with a high heel. Yep. Uh, Whose high heel was it? My own. Okay. Do you have a question, Mal? Um, I'm starting to think so. Uh, okay. So the first one, you, the, the can of gas, Mm -hmm. you accidentally lit it on fire. Yep. Was this recently or was this on a show? No, long time ago when I was a teenager. When you were a teenager, Mm -hmm. was it, you were trying to make a joke or were you trying to? Nope. I was trying to put out a flaming roll of toilet paper and the jerry can was very close to it and the flame leaped over and set it on fire. Jesus, so I'm going to go with the lies number three. You hire a Latino that you had a crush on. Or a <laughs> I'm going to go with that. That couldn't possibly lie. have happened. Yeah. <laughs> possibly. Um, but... I'm going to say, uh, okay, wait, uh, last question who gave you the high heels why did you have them the high heels were something i acquired to do drag and it was after the show that i was leaving and i was spinning the heels in my hand because i didn't want to wear them anymore and it flung out and hit the window Hmm. Hmm. okay Uh, my guess is the lie is about the gas thing that it wouldn't just burn it would probably blow up so you would be dead (laughs) <laughs> That's my guess. <laughs> okay, and what about now? you, Mel? Yeah, I'm going to go with the Latino thing. <laughs> okay, so this is your sixth sense moment. I've been dead this whole time. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, no, the lie is the heel. Ooh, so okay. I did set a jerry can of gasoline on fire, and surprisingly enough, it did not blow up. It just wow. set on fire. And Scary. sorry, Mal, I totally had a crush on you when I first hired you. <laughs> I mean, I got to be honest. I mean, check this out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can you blame me? Can you yeah, blame me? I, I mean, got good taste. I got to give you that. Yeah, yeah that's, true. that's true. Why I need to meet your uh, your dating person. <laughs> yeah, Take up my competition. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. So wait, so what was the lie? I'm already the confused. The heel. Uh-huh. The heel. Yeah. Okay, okay. It did fling out of my hand, but it never broke a window. It never you broke know, a window. I, no. I should have I should have gotten the, the, the tank thing, the gas tank thing, because yeah, they, those things never blow up. Those things are actually mm. yeah, yeah. Huh. Okay. Wow. <laughs> well, boys, boys, girls, people, we have come to the end of today's show. Um, Mao, do you have anything that you want to take away from today's conversation? Uh, besides, apparently, uh, uh, Robert had a crush on me. Um, 
I mean, I'm I know, hot. Just, <laughs> yeah, um, yes. yeah, that's the takeaway. Yes. That's my takeaway for there. Um, <laughs> well, I, I honestly, again, I think it's a reinforcement of be careful with how you use the internet. With be careful with your expectations, and uh, um, I love meeting you, David, and love seeing you, uh, Robert, as always. So, those are my takeaways. Uh, just you know, be patient, uh, balance things out, and live in the moment. Mm. How about you, Robert? If you say you have two takeaways, <laughs> I will take another swig of my water because you always have two takeaways. I have one takeaway, David. Okay. <laughs> that I should only bring one takeaway. <laughs> no. Um, no, it would be that um, I really like the point you brought up around the whole... Um, Sort of just, yeah, the dehumanization of so much of what we're, what we, the technology has been built around in terms of the design or the monetization of it, how it's just like, it's, it, it, yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I just found that very mm. insightful. Yeah. It's powerful. You know, we gotta, we gotta slow down. We gotta slow down and read books. Mm -hmm. I've been saying it since this podcast started. Just read some books. Feel what it feels like to think the way another person thinks. That's why I like reading books. Um, and you only get that experience through a longer, deeper experience of them. Absolutely. Yeah, that's that's my takeaway as well. Wow. So thank you, folks, for listening to Tissues of the Day. You can follow me, David, at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow Robert at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. And you can follow Mao at Mao Mercado on Twitter and Instagram and I believe Facebook. Did yes. you say, right? Uh, yeah. yeah, you can find me on Facebook. You can find me in everything is pretty much Mao Mercado. That's my that's my handle for all of things. Nice. Uh, and of course, if you're listening to the audio version, this podcast is also viewable on YouTube on the BitButton channel, youtube.com slash C slash BitButton. So you can just bask in the glory of the double mm. Latino uh, stereo visual yeah. that you got today. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Como estas? Hello, my friend. <laughs> Todo el mundo. How are you doing, <laughs> Cari Carro? <laughs> I'm white. <laughs> uh, thank you for joining us. Stay wet, internet. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Don't you get. <laughs> Robert's retainer fell out. <laughs> wow. Good shit.